clicking recording. Hi everyone, thanks again for jumping in. Uh, it does seem like we, we're having a consistency in daily calls, which helps. I think we're gonna figure out some other way to unbundle these calls into specific while still having a general check-in, maybe not 30 minutes, but the 15 minute one. And yeah, let's just go through the things that I've outlined on the agenda. I also think it will be helpful for us to open up a little bit uh, to Q&A, if any exists during this call, uh, because we've been pushing to, you know, providing some services, but there are more and more people that are willing to provide feedback, and I think this is also a time for us to step back and listen uh, more, you know, uh, to, to, to the feedback that people have in, in general. So the number one thing that I've listed out was discuss current blockers and how to make progress uh, progress with individual tasks. And maybe Daniel, you can jump in. Hey, Arthur, uh, can, can I interrupt uh, for a quick second? Um, could we do mute as default for everyone in the chat? I'm getting a lot of feedback. Did that? Let me figure out who causes that. Okay, so I muted everyone. Uh, whoever decides to to raise a hand, just unmute yourself. Uh, so Daniel, if you can jump in on this first point. I'm sorry, uh, just there a little bit. So for, for point one, you're talking about which one there? Uh, discuss current blockers and how to make progress within individual tasks. Um, yeah, so a couple of things. One, one thing that is, uh, is useful is we, we're starting to have, part of the blockers is just getting organized. So um, Anyone, if you are experiencing a blocker, you can you can communicate that in, in general is fine. If you're lost in terms of where to go, going to onboarding is fantastic. Um, if you are looking for something to do, and this one is key, because uh, we know there's a lot of people who are around who are looking for what they should be doing, uh, is uh, under check-in. You can simply put that you're, you're looking for a task there, or if you, uh, if you go into the um, task matching area, that's another place where you can find that. Uh, we know that we're looking at uh, the resources. Part of it is the, the chaos of figuring out um, what are the different sources that people can be using. Um, and we're looking at how we can, can get a little bit better organized. And one of the pieces that uh, is critical is that we're working on today is starting to get some team coordinators and making sure that we, we continue developing that structure piece. Um, beyond there, I'd love to hear from any of the, any of the given folks who are working what, what critical blockers are for them. Yeah, maybe it's a good time for a roll call for team leaders at this point and just team managers. I know that Maya is here, who is uh, leading the here, yep. risks task. Uh, anyone else here from the geo vaccines and the uh, transmission task? This is Christine. I'm from the transmission task. Nice. So yeah, maybe let's start with Maya and then Christine, you can uh, follow up. Uh, I don't think we have a particular uh, blockers at this moment. Uh, we have we we are starting to have uh, uh, some kind of a structure, and it feels like we are proceeding on the task. And there are a few people um, are uh, expected to, I, I believe, pretty soon uh, deliver first results, and it will be another point from which we can. Uh, uh, move for, further. Uh, probably the main uh, issue that I face at the moment is that um, it is a little bit confusing in terms of structure, but this just it's a, a day. As I learned before, it's a day, another day, and it will be resolved. We will be fine. Exactly. All right. That sounds amazing. I, I do think that I start to see this pattern of you know, uh, just like importance of the spark, the initial spark in the process. Uh, if someone else from the, the other tasks, the other three tasks feels that there is a lack of that spark, try to go back to the risk channel and check out kind of the, the push that I've been trying to establish. And primarily it's just sparking conversation, pushing the, the call and even if it's five people, on that call like if you're all talking nonsense it still helps to spark that conversation 
So identifying people that are eager to help, push them politely, showcase what these people are doing, and then wait for others to, to see that and, and join. Sorry, I'm, I'm losing my voice again. So uh, that sounds great for, for risks team. Christine, can you jump on, on your task uh, status out there? Sure. So um, yeah, we tried to kind of establish some sort of roadmap and I uh, talked with uh, Savannah uh, yesterday. Uh, we kind of have an idea about how we want to proceed. So first of all, uh, for our text, even if it's a subtext, sub there's still a lot of sub questions that we can focus on. So we're thinking about maybe we should also prioritize within these sub questions. Uh, so, so right now I'm thinking about looking into questions that might have more data and have more policy impact at the moment. And then we'll focus on those first. And we make, I, well, I made a diagram about how we could probably, you know, proceed and I also looked into a simple search engine that seemed to be very effective uh, in just, you know, first filtering out uh, a lot of noise in the whole uh, database. And that's pretty helpful for uh, kind of identifying the most relevant articles. And I think that would be a pretty useful first step to, you know, kind of snowballing from there to find more articles. And yeah, I think that's what, where we are right now. We're thinking about maybe uh, kind of refine the search engine uh, to make it more user-friendly and then a better flow. Um, and then I think there are more, uh, quite a lot of resources on how to do data extraction. Uh, like I know some folks are working on that um, in other channels. So I think, yeah, we would like to probably uh, know what other people are doing and then how we can best coordinate everything. Yep. Sounds great. Anyone else from the vaccine or GEO task, even if you're not leading or not considering uh, yourself a leader, if you just have some context into what's going on there, uh, please let us know. Uh, uh, so, uh, can you hear me? Yep. Yeah, uh, Daniel here. I'm. Uh, uh, leading coordinating for um, for geo task. Uh, um, so just started uh, trying to with uh, organize the team and uh, set up a few starting tasks. Input from other groups would be very appreciated on the kind of data that we want because our goal is to also to provide uh, data sets related to the geography. It could be population density for transmission rates and so on. Uh, for now, we have extracted a good data set time series of meteorological data globally um, with uh, a couple of hundred thousand meteorological stations all over the globe. Um, that uh, could be a, a starting point. Uh, now it's really a question of uh, getting organized in the next few days and uh, setting up all the tasks that uh, we want having our first roadmap and uh, then we can start. I'm working in that direction. I'm also waiting for people to uh, check in, we create a Trello board um, for, for the tasks and so on. Sounds um, good. Yeah. Yeah. Again, like i not sure how many of you have seen the Loom video that I've recorded that uh, kind of had my general thought process, but I think the most uh, impactful thing from that um, document and video was kind of uh, forgetting about the specifics and trying to think about small impact and large impact items and just listing those out as you think about the task and then uh, kind of reverse engineering what we have to do to achieve the small impact items and the large impact items. Yes, first large impact item that we would like to target is studying seasonality. And that's why we're extracting meteorological data as first step, because uh, so we can maybe check uh, um, for countries at different latitudes to see if there's an effect on, uh, on the spread of the virus. Sounds great. Anyone from the vaccines uh, task or someone that has any context into what's, what's the progress?
Okay, so it seems like this one we need some help on the, the update and just general progress. All right, that sounds great. Um, the, next uh, the next item on the agenda is uh, oh no, one second. Uh, NLP tasks as the first piece of any pipeline when it comes to existing Kaggle data sets. And, um, you know, that was my assumption based on the experience within the risk, the risk factors tasks is the fact that for us to achieve any type of um, large impact items, we really have to start from the NLP uh, task. And that's why I created those two initial ones. Not sure if there are more now, but just thinking about, you know, NLP people and how to engage them at this stage, even if task by itself doesn't sound like a, a huge impact, just preparing that uh, initial uh, kickoff, you know, and wrapping our heads around how to start working with the existing data set is a huge uh, um, catalyst to the process. Does anyone have insight into the how to tie in NLP into this type of ideation stage? Maybe you, Brendan, having the exposure to the risk task. Mm -hmm. Talk about this. Uh, so uh, even though I'm like mostly on the risk task, I, I, I guess I'm stepping back and sort of going for data quality um, and coverage. So at the moment, I'm focusing on the NLP preprocessing. So updates on that is that I'm working with Chris Matman and uh, so Tim something else. Um, who did the Tika crawl and the C-takes uh, metadata extraction from different, um, from all of the articles. And what I'm doing is uh, adding to that. So extracting per column, all of the new entities, the types of new entities, uh, this is proteins, uh, symptoms, et cetera. Um, and then I'm also lemmatizing the text. So uh, making everything normalized across the text. So the words are in their base form. Uh, then we can use that for TF-IDF. It can be used for keyword search, whatever else. And then I'm also doing the vectorization. So um, uh, I already put, I put out vectors for like every line in the titles, all of the lines in the abstracts, and then also for the tables and figures. And those uh, files will be uploaded relatively soon. Uh, to summarize, all of the NLP stuff, I'm handling all the pre-processing, and it should be tied into the uh, the crawler and uh, infrastructure that we'll have with Chris and Tim. Uh, and then that data will be available for everybody. And then processing that data will come later, but at least we'll have like a unified way of downloading all of the same data. So. Sounds great. And quick uh, question for people that are less technical and uh, even for me to better understand the context of the task. In simple words, what you guys are doing, creating a general index uh, for all of the papers in the data set, right? Not just the papers, but also like every single sentence in every single paper. So this information can be used to cluster, to classify, to extract uh, triplets for knowledge graphs. You can use it for anything. This okay, so to transform it even into simpler words for even less technical people, you're tagging mm -hmm. every sentence within the data set with uh -huh. uh, some form of uh, keywords, tags, for us to do a much uh, more efficient uh, retrieval of the data. Correct. Mm -hmm. oh, wow, that's amazing. Um, I have a question. So, um, so we're working on like a simple search engine, and it's uh, indexed on token level. But like virus names, they're not uh, tokenized properly. So I was wondering if um, we can have some help with that as well, like just to uh, at the token level um, indexing. Uh, sure. Um, which channel is that on? Oh, I'm uh, on a transmission TI, TIE. Transmission. And that's on the cooperative or on Corona Y? Corona Y. Corona Y. Okay. Uh, transmission. Okay. Um, I'll like, hop in uh, there. Also, and... like, uh, I don't think right now uh, the, um, the program allows, like, a uh, bigram, like, you know, the phrases. If we want to search, for example, risk factors together, I think right now it's been breaking out. Uh, so yeah, just some probably some technical help would be very helpful. Sure, um, I'll hop in. We can we can discuss the specifics, and I'm happy to help. So yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, perfect. Yep. Thank you. Amazing. I do feel that this is coming up together really nicely. It sounds like the pre-processing of the data will be a huge foundation for all four of the tasks. 
And yeah, like I, it sounds like you, Brandon, will be kind of, you know, step backward from, from the actual tasks and preparing that pipeline for, for people working on specific tasks. Question about the, uh, 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 sorry, I, I just wanted to inform you, uh, Brandon and Daniel, uh, what I've done is that I've created a tidal data set. Uh, so that it is a, uh, and I have uploaded your vectors out there, all your word embeddings, uh, as well as the other embeddings like multilingual. Someone had given a, a for the multilingual translations on all the glossary items. I have uploaded it in the same title data set. So uh, what we are trying to do is that make that as a central repository for all the data sets that will be generated in this uh, forum. Uh, and whoever has generated it, uh, like Daniel, if you can give me. Uh, a link to your data set, uh, your uh, from data set you're working on, I can upload it and I'll make you a collaborator on the same data set so that everyone has access to that and it is a one point place for maintaining all the data. That's fantastic. So at the top of the data sets, we can talk about that off of this uh, call, but then at the top of our data set spreadsheet, uh, we can make sure that there's a link to that. that uh, Correct. So I was thinking if you can put up a pinned link on each of our Slack channels also. So like, uh, because there are so many uh, conversations that are going on, if you can take the most important part of it and just pin it onto the top of the Slack channel, that would be very good for us. Sounds great. Thanks. Uh, someone else wanted to, to speak up? A uh, qu qu question for Brandon. Um, you, with about the NLP data set um, that everyone's starting from. You said it's um, you know, possible to do classifications because you've got all the sentence level data. My question is if there is any preliminary classification that has been done, and if so, where the canonical source for that would be? Uh, so in, in a larger way of looking at this, uh, we would ideally do classification based on labels uh, of interest from a subject matter expert, but just to test whether I could or not, um, I trained a classifier based only on the vectors to predict whether a line was from a title or an abstract, and it got an AUC of 0.98, so the, the accuracy was really, really nice, um, and it took two and a half seconds. So um, as long as we have some kind of labeled data and we know what we're looking for, um, shouldn't be an issue. Classification seems to work pretty well, so. Okay. I, I got that, I might have not been clear. I, I was asking if you impose classification. Um, I, I, I got that you're saying it works. Ah, uh, sorry, no, um, I don't add any labels. Um, the only labels that are in the text are the, uh, at this point would be the named entities. So uh, we, could, we could treat those as labels, uh, but uh, further work on that will need to be done with subject matter experts who say, this is what we're interested in. This is part of X kind of label. This is part of Y kind of label. And then we work from there, so. Got it. Uh, can I jump in with a quick question? Can people hear me? Yep. Yeah. I was having trouble before. I, I just wanted to make sure, especially with the uh, pre data pre-processing teams and everything, um, is everyone aware that they're planning on releasing a new version of the data set every Friday? And is there a plan for updating the the processing we're doing um, uh, in an ongoing way? So my, pro my pre-processing pipeline is gonna be available as a uh, as like a Flask application that will be put into the pipeline with Tika and CTakes so that as that data is being fed into Tika and CTakes, it's also undergoing processing and the data will be enriched so that everything is all in one place and it's all happening at the same time um, and it should be available uh, whenever their crawl is finished. And they said that um, last time it took several days for the call to finish, but that it's been sped up so that it only takes about five hours. So, And in terms of your uh, computational resources to finish this uh, pre-processing, how long does it take to currently finish it with, with the limited resources? Uh, with, with, uh, if I exclude the body text, uh, so just t titles, abstracts, figures, and tables, it took me uh, maybe eight hours. With the body text, it takes about three and a half days. So um, someone actually, I'm, I'm discussing with somebody who has uh, extensive computational resources. Um, I'm gonna send him the data and uh, have it processed and I don't know how long that'll take, but definitely less than three days, so. Makes sense. And a quick update, I, I've been in conversation with uh, Kegel CEO, Anthony, 
we've uh, failed to achieve results on the initial request for computational resources to Google, even though he's part of Google. It's just, you know, corporations are not prepared for this influx of, you know, requests and just dealing with it uh, is very hard for them. So he sent me a, another form that was previously used for uh, schools and universities to request this type of help. Uh, we've submitted that and he's going to push it through uh, internally. So hopefully we get some results soon. Uh, meanwhile, um, also had a, a follow-up call with New York Times reporter and talked and described to him the current challenge with computational resources. He's working on a story. Hopefully, uh, it, it is, uh, it's going to be published and he will include this piece, which should help us in, in the overall efforts. So fingers crossed. All right, so I think we can... could, would, could you just quickly describe what CTAKES and TICA are? I have, I have a suggestion. I'm just going to going to check because I know I know we're, we're all 1025. I'm wondering if it would be useful for the uh, for the NLP and the other machine learning folks to maybe uh, organize a separate call that yeah. can also be recorded because that way we can stream that stuff out and the people who most need it can then get, get a handle on it then. And most importantly, we can watch in 2x, which is the greatest invention That's right. of humanity. <laughs> yeah, right. I agree. Um, uh, I'll, I'll organize another call uh, with the machine learning people. Mm -hmm. All right. Sounds so good. The next part uh, is discuss medical expert integration and dedicate responsible person. So this is a very important piece. I feel like we're getting somewhere. There are a couple of people that have existing channels of communication like that, Natalie. Uh, woman and we we already have 10,000 emails of authors uh, from the um, first version of the basic similarity uh, comparison um, task and we're trying to figure out some discrepancy in the similarity score for us to efficiently message only people that are the most relevant to the current tasks and I think I'm going to execute that later today for risk factors task and see what kind of response we're gonna get, but we just need someone who is responsible for this medical expert integration and someone who is willing to, to manage this process. If there's someone on this call that could uh, volunteer for that, please speak up. Um, <clears throat> uh, I'll jump in here, it doesn't sound like anybody's uh, jumping in. Uh, this is Steve, we are, organizing a call tomorrow to frame out um, how we would get that input. So uh, the call is designed to say, uh, where in the process do we need subject matter expert and what form will that input take such that it's uh, manageable for the subject matter experts to actually do it. We're not asking too much of them. It's standardized. So when we kind of fan out into some sort of crowdsourcing, everybody comes back with output that looks uh, similar and it's designed in a way that it can feed into the machine learning model. So we can use it to uh, improve the machine learning models. So this call tomorrow is uh, the first, I'm sure of many discussions uh, around how to do that. I'd like to make it as productive as possible. So if you have ideas on that, please funnel them to me sometime today so I can put them together as uh, part of the agenda. And then when somebody does raise their hand to say, I'm going to, uh, I want to take the leadership of this, I'll kind of pass on uh, all of this work. So there is some structure and foundation to, uh, to do that. But I think this is a critical part of our value proposition because you know, we've got a large team and we're combining experts from many disciplines. Getting that human input into this process, I think is going to be a really a, a key component of the, the value proposition of what we're working on. So I think it's a critical uh, task to set up the framework such that we know it's kind of a sustainable process. Absolutely. Yeah. One thing that comes to mind is it seems to me like this is probably going to be an iterative piece. So just thinking big, big picture on it, that um, we need to start with the things that are the lightest touch that people can be doing from the subject matter expert point of view. As we increase showing what our value is, then we can be getting people who are a little bit more kind of drawn in and helping us more deeply. And eventually, if they it as easy as possible for a subject matter expert to be sort of a human in the loop, helping us vet the data that's coming on. Um, we can see if we can find people who are finding that 
sufficiently valuable for their teams uh, that they would want to jump into. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, so the call will be tomorrow at 10 Pacific, uh, make conflict with one of these update calls, but we probably, as was suggested earlier, need to spin off and do uh, a few subject matter calls, um, you know, which, with smaller groups. So anyway, but the call will be tomorrow at 10. I'll, send, I'll post stuff in both channels, both groups. Uh, and if you've got thoughts, please funnel them to me today so we can have a very structured call tomorrow. Yep, sounds good. I've also been talking with uh, Anthony and he's been trying to push uh, that new Kaggle summary page for the teams to kind of uh, take what, what they've already uncovered and position it as a finding for medical experts to look at. That was the official request from White House in terms of them being overwhelmed with what's happening and simplify the, the process of uh, understanding the results. So I do think as we proceed with these individual tasks, uh, even creating a basic structure, like things that uh, we've outlined with the stages of disease, different risk factors, is a good foundation to showcase that progress and just showcase what are the findings that we uh, attempt to, to find here. Absolutely. Sounds good. So the rest, and we're almost out of time, but uh, let's just do a quick uh, Q&A and further feedback integration on what we can do better as a group. I would encourage people that are not participating in the admin activities to just tell us what they think is missing, uh, because obviously we're biased by you know craziness and, and madness that is happening here, but we'd love to hear your thoughts. Hi, um, I'm, I'm interested to know, um, can you just remind me, what, what is the status of the vaccines group at the moment? Is there anyone assigned and working on that topic and they're just not in this call or is that still really looking for people to get involved with? There is one guy that I saw that Alex uh, something that actually created a very structured and nice spreadsheet that outlined inputs and outputs for different subtasks like folding something and who knows what those those words mean but i think that's a great start he's not on the call i believe but uh it seems like he's technical and could benefit from some non-technical person to help spark the conversation bring more people into this channel and just see uh, the amazing effort that he's doing because he has access to people that are working on vaccine and that's amazing piece Okay, great. Because I also noticed that was light on the um, the summary page as well, uh, the vaccine section. So it looks like there's um, maybe 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 even more low hanging fruit there than there are in some of the other areas. True, true. So maybe we can actually try and use what he already uncovered and already prepared for the summary page. Yeah, let's see what happens today. Can I make a just a really quick? Um... Uh, plug for sort of a um, HR standpoint. We've got a lot of people here. Well, actually, no, the point is we got a few people here that are doing a lot of work. And so I think it would be really productive for people to be thinking about how can you get more of the new joins and more people to help you and start framing some of your tasks in that, in that viewpoint. Because, you know, I think that there's a, we're talking about 150 people. I don't think that a third of them or, you know, I don't think there's two thirds of them that are doing anything. Um, so it'd be very useful to make it very obvious how people can help out in small ways. Yeah, there are 300 people actually, which is even crazier. The 150, I think it's the ones that actually filled out the team roster. And that's another problem to solve, like how to actually engage the 150 that haven't. But yeah, I agree. Like just thinking about how to scale our internal efforts and delegate some of the tasks. I've been experimenting with different efforts. Like there are some random people that jump uh, into Slack, like Mary or Maria that offered the SEO help for the current website. I've asked her to prepare a single Google doc on actionable things and just execute it on that. So just giving very specific definitions on what kind of help you're looking for and the format simplifies it. And I'm happy to be a point of contact there. So if, you, if you're not really sure, feel free to reach out to me and uh, I'm going to try to facilitate that too and maybe help you turn things into tasks more people can do. Uh, 
may I please confirm? So if like, for example, if I have a specific task and I'm struggling with finding the right person for, for, for this task, then I can approach you and you will be helping me? Yes, that's right. Well, I'll, that's what I'm going to try to do. Oh, that's amazing. Thank you. Got it. Thank that's you. great. That's going to be huge. Bear yourself. <laughs> Okay, um, any other questions? Hi, um, I'm a new join. And so I, I, I'm, I'm- Are you Natalie? Person. Yeah, I'm Natalie. And uh, yeah, I was just trying to, before I participated, try to gather information before I contribute. But um, I have, um, you know, I do have some contacts with subject matter experts and um, I, 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 I have meetings set up, but I'm not exactly sure how to approach that right now. It, 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 since I just joined today, I'm like going through all the channels and it's a lot to <laughs> sift through. And um, so having a, a, a reasonable <laughs> list of inquiries for that's, the virologists would be really helpful. Like I, one of my uh, contacts is someone who's a virologist in New York right now, and he has a lot of on-the-ground data points that he is happy to share. I just, um, I think just having a more concrete sense of what I'm asking him to do. I know that Steve said that, or someone said that um, having a light hand for them right now would be helpful since they're inundated with asks. So I'm just curious how it would be best to go about something like that. I think it will be helpful for Steve to kind of onboard you into this process and the call. I think he mentioned very good structure about like how to make it easy, standardized and light handed. So if you can jump on a quick conversation with Steve after this call, that would be great. Yeah. In fact, uh, I was just talking to Maya and we're uh, maybe going to chat before tomorrow's meeting. So uh, if you want to join that call, let me know and I'll, I'll set up a, uh, Okay, so we're probably gonna do it right after this call. So I'll, I'll set up another Zoom call, talk specifically about input from domain experts. Anybody who's interested, please join. Yeah, that would be amazing, just so that I have some sort of standard protocol for how to ask questions and what's useful. I, that's gonna be really helpful, so thanks. I'll definitely be on that. Okay. Yes, same here. Um, also, uh, in our uh, trial, I'll just uh, open up um, with, uh, requests from other teams for various data sets. I think that could be helpful. So we can also provide support for other tasks from a data point, data sourcing mostly, point of view. Yeah, I agree. All right, uh, sounds great. Thanks so much for everyone uh, jumping on a call. Uh, sounds like we're making crazy good progress here uh let's let's keep the communication tight stay healthy and i'll be uploading the recording shortly great thank, thank you. you Arthur. all right thank you so much Bye. thank you Bye, everybody.